silver screens in the city. And a little known fact is that his granddaughter, uh, Kira Chaplin, daughter of Eugene Chaplin, son of Una O'Neill and Charlie Chaplin, Una was the daughter of playwright Eugene O'Neill, was in fact born in Belfast. So a lovely connection there. Um, now the Alhambra, what happened to the Alhambra? Well, here it is in the mid 1950s. We're looking along Garfield Street here. Look how gorgeous it looks. These were photographs taken by Bert Hardy, the famed picture post uh, photographer, and the Alhambra shining bright there on Lower North Street. Sadly, only a few years after this photograph, it, a fire ripped through the building and the Alhambra was lost to the city. But here's the thing about cinemas or music halls or theatres. I think they're a luminous presence in the city. Now, here's the site today. Doesn't seem very luminous when you look at that. Um, here's entertainment in Belfast. Uh, we have a traffic warden here issuing a ticket um, just right in front of where Charlie Chaplin once performed. But wait, there is an entertainment footprint to be had. Think of culture night in the cathedral quarter when the city comes alive. This area of the city comes alive. And look at that. Amazing. Right in front of the old Alhambra, music is once again playing. And if you look up into the far window, you will see Charlie Chaplin himself looking down. Isn't that wonderful? Um, now, A has also got to be for Art Deco. Uh, this was hugely influential in the design of cinemas. This design style started in Paris in the mid-1920s and uh, would go on to influence architecture, furniture, art, and the future. Um, it was a bit of an interwar dream. It was influenced by the ancient and the modern. You know, you look at Art Deco, it's sumptuous. It's like ancient Egypt. It has the patterns of the Aztecs, but it also has the sleek and modern lines of modernity. It's, it has neon lights, it has reflections. It was incredibly sumptuous. And, you know, obviously influenced planes, trains, automobiles. This was a future that was after the First World War that was flying forward. And during this period, um, 1933 to 37, just a four year period, 17 cinemas were built in Belfast. And these were Art Deco picture palaces. If you think of the city at the time, many people lived in damp, overcrowded tourist housing. And to go through the doors of an Art Deco picture palace was a real wow moment for people. So, what Art Deco picture palaces are we talking about? Well, how about the letter B? How about the Broadway? Here's the Broadway on the Falls Road. You can, you can see it on the map there, um, Cine, for where it was located. One of the most beautiful Art Deco cinemas built in Belfast in 1936. I love the design. Look at the sleek design of those curvature. And I love that little ladder on the far left there. It almost looks like a swimming pool. I, I, I just want to dive into the Broadway. Beautiful neon sign. And the MC you see on the building there was for Michael Curran. Uh, Michael Curran was one of the cinema entrepreneurs at the time, who also um, had the Capital Cinema on the Antrim Road, the Regal Cinema on the Lisburn Road, and the Astoria Cinema on the Upper Newton Arch Road. These were beautiful, suburban, luxurious cinemas. This cinema was opened by Richard Hayward, uh, the writer, actor, musician, um, and uh, he was the first voice, he was the first Ulster voice to be heard on the BBC. Um, so uh, a really interesting figure. So what happened to the Broadway cinema? Well, unfortunately, there's a lot of sadness in this trip, but we're gonna find some positive notes along the way. So here is the Broadway cinema in 1972, looking a little sorry for itself. 
a wonderful photograph taken by a local photographer, Alan Lagarsmuir. And unfortunately, the cinema was firebombed during the Troubles. And this is unfortunately a way of a lot of the end for a lot of the great Belfast cinemas. And when you see the inside of the cinema, the devastation is quite extraordinary. Wow. So there's no way back for that, unfortunately, for the Broadway. And many other great Belfast cinemas were unfortunately damaged beyond repair during the Troubles. Now, C. C is for the classic. You'll see up on the little map here, it was located in Castle Place, I mean, Castle Lane, running into Corn Market there. And, and there were a number of cinemas as well as the Empire Theatre located here. But the classic was really a wonder cinema. Um, 1,800 seats. It's quite extraordinary to have 1,800 seats in one screen. And it was the big theater with the super program. And here is that super program, which I'm glad to say is with us today in Prony, the last word in luxury and comfort. And look at that beautiful um, management, catering service, showmanship. This was a night's entertainment at the Classic. It had a cafe and a dance hall attached to it. Um, it opened in 1923. 1949, it um, hosted the world premiere of Odd Man Out, the classic James Mason Celtic noir set in Belfast. And it later changed its name to the Gaumont, but everyone in Belfast knew it as the classic. Um, so what happened to the classic? Well, look, here's what happened to the classic. Unfortunately, it closed in 1961, which is a significant date that we will return to later. And it became the British Home Stores that many of us remember, that building, that location. Um, and you can see that that is very similar to how it is today in terms of where it's located. Um, and the British Home Stores is now gone as well. And uh, we don't know what's going to happen on that site. But every time I walk past, I think of the classic. Um, C, of course, also has to be for the Curzon. I couldn't leave out the Curzon. It would be criminal to leave out the Curzon. Here it is showing one of my favorite films, The Thomas Crown Affair, starring Steve McQueen and Faye Dunaway. This is another beautiful Art Deco cinema. Um, that was opened in 1936. Let's just take a walk through that door into the curves and look at those beautiful design. Um, again, it has that feel that you're entering an Egyptian tomb. I mean, it's so golden and wonderful and colorful. That's your route to the, to the stalls. Um, 1,400 seats in the Curzon. And there's the balcony and the stalls. Again, a one screen cinema, a wonder cinema for the Ormo Road. Um, unfortunately for the Curzon, um, it was firebombed in 1977 as well, severely damaged, but reopened again uh, at the Christmas showing Star Wars and came back with a real force. Um, sadly, it did not survive uh, closure. It did eventually close down and was demolished in 1999. But you do kind of feel as if, if the Curzon had survived uh, beyond that period, today it would be thriving. You look at the Ormo Road and you just think it's so missing, the Curzon. Um, interestingly enough, a little documentary was made about the Curzon called The Curzon Project. There is now a housing uh, block located where the building was. And look what happened in 2018. They actually screened the Curzon project in the Curzon. So cinema again returned home. So there's that luminous footprint once again of the cinema. Okay, the letter D, we move on to D. And I'm grateful to the former projectionist at the Curzon, Bill Blaney, who informed me um, that 3D films arrived in Belfast in April 1953. Now, there was a little bit of a problem with 3D uh, in Belfast, and that was because many of the patrons uh, prided themselves on wearing 
you know, on 2020 eyesight and refuse to wear glasses. I'm not wearing glasses uh, and I'm certainly not paying for them. Uh, and then, of course, after the film, they complained that the screen was blurry and wanted their money back. Uh, they didn't quite understand it. Um, but I am reliably informed by Bill that the first film to be seen in 3D in Belfast is this film to our left, A Day in the Country, where two boys steal a car and drive madly along country roads and through a farmyard. So the whole audience were kind of swerving in their seats. Um, so it, it was a joy ride. Um, so uh, no surprise that that was a big success in Belfast. Um, and there were other films obviously uh, available. Um, here we have College Capers uh, of a bit more of a risque variety um, that did play. 3D of course did come back again around the time of the millennium and has vanished once again. Who knows if it will return at some time in the future. Okay, we've reached the letter E. We have to mention the Empire Theatre um, because as well as the Alhambra, the Empire was one of the early exponents of cinema. This is where the Lumiere brothers brought their cinematograph in November 1896 and screened their films to great acclaim to Belfast audiences. Now this is on the site of Victoria Square. You'll see the kitchen bar as it used to be there. And I only knew the kitchen bar uh, because the Empire Theatre was demolished in the mid 60s, but it, it was the kitchen to the Empire. You know, so that's where the performers would eat. So Charlie Chaplin used to have his dinner in the kitchen bar. Um, thankfully the kitchen bar is still there, but just slightly moved along a little. Now, E is also for East because, as you know, this is the East Side Arts Festival. So I wanted to share with you some of the great cinemas that did exist in East Belfast. Um, now, this is one of them. This is The Princess, which was on the Newton Arch Road, uh, opened in 1912, closed in 1960. Very unusual structure, um, like that tar-like structure which had a neon lights on it. So it was the Moulin Rouge of East Belfast. Quite an amazing looking building. Sadly, no longer with us. Um, then we have the castle. Uh, this was on the Castle Ray Road. Uh, this building is still there. I think it's a carpet showroom now, if I'm correct. Uh, but this was very much known as John Wayne's Stable. This is where you would go and see your Westerns and you would tie your horse up outside. Um, so the castle was very popular. It closed in 1966. And two other cinemas here. Um, we have the Ambassador, um, which on our right here on the Craigie Road, um, opened in 1936, one of those Art Deco cinemas. Uh, closed in 1972, and towards the end of th its life, The Ambassador, it showed a lot of, um, let, let us say, naturist films um, uh, from the continent and got uh, a bit of a risky reputation. Uh, today it's Wise Buys, of course, so the next time you're in Wise Buys, just imagine what they were projecting on the screen. Uh, over to the left is The Willowfield, picture house known affectionately as the Winky and the Winky uh, continued until 1973 and it's one of the famed Belfast cinemas where if you had a jam jar you could get in with a jam jar recycling at its best way back in the day um, okay now F is for food um, I don't know how you feel about eating in the cinema, but we're going to explore that uh, now through the classic cinema, the cinema that we saw there in Classic Lane. Because um, as you can see, it's the classic cinema and restaurant. Here it is in September 1939. Now this may well have been the golden age of Belfast cinemas. Just on the eve of World War II, there were 43 
cinemas in Belfast at this time. Um, but what was really striking about all of these cinemas is that they had restaurants, cafes. And here is the menu in the classic. Now look at this. We're going out for a film and we're going to dine. So we can have cream of tomato or green pea soup. We can have grilled sole. We can have Irish stew, roast beef. We can have vegetables. We can have baked apple dumpling. We can have coffee and cheese. This is all wonderful. And the classic cinema's restaurant is open from 10 a.m. until 11 p.m., which is just absolutely fantastic. So see, fine dining. Now, what has happened to food since this in the cinema? Well, look what's happened. Cheesy nachos. Something has gone seriously wrong. Um, now, one of the issues for me about food in the cinema is that food seems to be getting louder. So then the films have to get louder to cover up the sound of the food. And I've always wondered why cinemas don't sell silent food. What about bananas? Opening a banana is so quiet that you're not going to disturb anyone. Now, the skin may be a health and safety issue, but, you know, let's work on that. Um, now, famously, of course, uh, QFT, uh, which we will come to later, uh, refused to um, serve popcorn. No pop here. This is from the mid-1990s. Uh, real film buffs prefer coffee. Yeah, if you're a real film buff, you have a coffee. You don't eat popcorn. But I have to say, I'm a bit of a popcorn advocate, aficionado. I have some popcorn here. Anybody else got popcorn? Now is the time to eat some. It's so good. Um, one of the reasons for this is because popcorn is actually a Stone Age snack. That's right. The oldest ever popcorn was found in a cave in New Mexico and was... 5,600 years old. Okay, so what did that mean? Well, that meant when ancient people were in a cave, sitting around the fire, maybe with some drawings on the walls, telling stories, almost in a cinema, they were eating popcorn. So, it's an ancient tradition that I am following to this day. Gee, Wow, we've reached G. G has got to be for the Grand Opera House. Laughter, tears, and applause since 1895. And obviously some of the grits have appeared on the stage of the Opera House, including Laurel and Hardy, Pavarotti. But it also operated exclusively as a cinema from 1949 to 1972. It did screen films, even though it wasn't designed to do so. And I think that's the challenge for theatres, because in a way, the projection box was never quite in the right place. And depending on where you sat in the Grand Opera House, you couldn't really properly see the screen. Um, now, the Opera House was firebombed in 1972. It faced demolition. It was closed for eight years. Because I was thinking to myself, wow, when I was a kid, I never went to the Opera House. And of course, I didn't because it wasn't open. Uh, from 72 to 80, it was closed. It was saved. It was restored and is being restored once again uh, as we speak and is due to reopen again at the end of the year. Um, now, the Grand Opera House was part of the big three in terms of Belfast entertainment. So here we are looking along Great Victoria Street. We've got the Opera House, the Hippodrome, and the Ritz side by side. So I'm glad to say that H has to be for the Hippodrome. So look at the Hippodrome next to the Grand Opera House. It's like the big brother of the Grand Opera House. It towers above it. Um, so this was an Edwardian designed theater that was opened in 1907 and in, in included a cinema, showed films. 
Um, Hippodrome, of course, comes from the Greek meaning horse race. And there was exotic animals in the Hippodrome. Uh, every Christmas, it was famous for his Christmas circus, uh, ringmaster clowns and those exotic animals. Now, in 1961, it became a cinema and it was renamed the Odeon. But here it is just before that with a picture again by Bert Hardy of the picture post. And we can see that Demetrius and the Gladiators is playing in Cinemascope, the widest, biggest possible screen in uh, the Hippodrome. So now, what happened to the Hippodrome? Well, this is what the Hippodrome is today. You can make up your own mind if you think we've moved forward, we have progressed in our architectural design. This is obviously being worked at at the moment. So I've still got hope that something grand is going to re-emerge. Okay, I is for IMAX. We talked about CinemaScope there being the biggest screen, but IMAX by far was the biggest screen ever seen in Belfast. And we're in Prony today, and very close to Prony was the site of the IMAX here in East Belfast. It opened in 2001, a massive screen that was higher than four double-decker buses. Uh, the projector for this thing was bigger than a small car, and it was the biggest ever cinema screen seen in Ireland. Uh, and unfortunately, it just did not take. I think it just arrived at the wrong time. I think now with the Titanic uh, Center and all the attractions there are in this part of the world, it would now succeed. So sadly, it closed in September 2007. Yes, that was the intermission. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time for intermission. I would love to say, go make a cup of tea. Um, you know, um, what about a hot dog or a chalk ice? But unfortunately, this is the A to Z, and it's already ooh, half past. So we've got to keep moving on. <clears throat> okay, so J is for Jack. This is John McBride Neal of Ann Street, who was the foremost architect of cinema's golden age in Belfast and across Northern Ireland. Here are some of the great cinemas that he designed in Belfast, including the Troxy, the Apollo, the Majestic, the Strand, the Cursion, the Picture Drome. Uh, he also designed the Regal in Larne, and his masterpiece was the Tonic Cinema in Bangor, which I'm sure some of you will be familiar with. But I just want to focus on two of his fine cinemas in Belfast. This beautiful cinema, the Picture Drome in Mount Pottinger, it was opened in 1934, again in that Art Deco period. And you look at the frontage there, it's very Aztec kind of design. I love that sleek and modern um, lettering to the cinema. And, you know, if we go inside, look how gorgeous it is. I mean, it's a really is a picture palace. And it was designed, you know, to the finest, um, you know, to the finest end. You know, beautiful tiling and door work there. Uh, and it had this oriental, exotic feel to it. So, I mean, if you left your tourist house and came here, you, you thought you were traveling around the world to be in a place like this. Now, here's the picture drum again, sadly, in the early 1970s. It's already closed at this point. It was uh, at a bit of a flash point here, obviously, in East Belfast. And you can see it's looking a bit worse for wear and a bit sorry for itself in such a short space of time. And today, it's the credit union. Well, it's still doing good. It's still doing good work. Uh, but it's amazing to think that that building was ever there. It feels like a dream. Um, apparently, there is a plaque to the picture dome somewhere along there. So I haven't found that yet, but I will try and look that up. Um, 
Now, I also want to mention the Majestic, um, another of John McBride Neal's beautiful designs on the Lisburn Road. Opened again in 1936, one of the great suburban cinemas. So cinema began in the city center and then moved outwards at this period to attract the populations um, that lived along the great thoroughfares of the city. And here we are on the Lisburn Road. Um, now, what has happened to the Majestic? Well, many of you will remember in the mid 70s, it turned into a furniture store and was a furniture store for many years. And then look what happened here. I came past one day uh, a few years ago and it was up for demolition. And I was outraged and uh, went to the Belfast Telegraph about this. But I was really glad to hear that the Windsor Baptist Church had bought the Majestic Cinema. And as you can see here, the Belfast Telegraph are quoting me to say this was an act of divine intervention. And if you've been on the Lisburn Road recently, you will see that the Windsor Baptist Church are revamping the building, bringing it back to life, and they're going to be using it next year, and it looks amazing. And I'm hoping that we can screen a film in there. Um, so these buildings are coming back to life. If they can somehow survive, they're coming back to life. If you want to know more about John McBride Neal and his work on the QFT player at the moment is the Uncle Jack, uh, a documentary made by his acclaimed nephew, filmmaker John T. Davis, uh, all about uh, McBride Neal's life and work. Well worth checking out. K is for kids clubs, uh, an important part of Belfast cinema history. It's how many people were introduced to the silver screen was through the Saturday morning kid clubs. Um, one of the most famous uh, of these was in the Curzon cinema. It was the Roy Rogers Writers Club. Um, that ran in the 1950s and was hugely popular with kids. And you would go and see those serials, you know, like the Flash Gordons and the, uh, you know, were, that were hugely popular uh, all through this period. Um, now, Roy Rogers, of course, did visit Belfast in 1953, made an appearance at the Hippodrome. There was myth and legend that, first of all, Trigger had his own room, had his own hotel room. And, uh, and also that Roy Rogers rode Trigger up the Ormo Road and 3,000 people turned up. Uh, but this is yet to be substantiated. So if anyone has any evidence of Roy Roger on Trigger on the Ormo Road, we'd love to know. Um, L is for logos. I don't know about you, but this is my favorite moment in the cinema. It's so exciting, isn't it? Because at this point, all films are great. I sit in my seat and I think I'm going to watch the best film ever. It very rarely turns out like that, but I'm really excited at that point. Now, which one is your favorite cinema logo? Well, without doubt, my favorite um, is this one. It's the MGM logo. And this is because Slats, Jackie, Telly, Coffee, Tanner, George, and Leo were the lions that were used in the MGM logo. And the very first lion used in the logo between 1916 and 1928 was called Slats, who was born in Dublin. He was a Dublin lion. Somehow ended up in Hollywood. Sadly, Slats died in 1936. And if you visit the McPherson Museum in Kansas, you can see the hide of Slats. But he is forever in our hearts. Now, M has to be for Movie House. Uh, and sadly, this is Dublin Road one of the great Belfast cinemas that we lost in 2020. Uh, it closed down and we never got to say goodbye 
because of COVID-19 and the fact that cinemas were closed at that time. A much loved city center cinema. It, this opened in 1993. Um, it was the MGM at that point uh, with Jurassic Park was the first film. It then became the Virgin Cinema and UGC, but it was only in 2003 when Michael McAdam bought it for Movie House did it really take on um, a great appeal to the audiences. And one of the reasons for this is you'll remember the old song, Saturday Night at the Movies. Um, well, Movie House changed up. Who cares about Saturday Night at the Movies? The most important night of the week at the movies was Tuesday night at the movies. That's right, Crazy Tuesday. Uh, this was when cinema prices were dropped to rock bottom. And all of a sudden, the most dead night of the week, they were queued down the Dublin Road. Um, and since Crazy Tuesday, we've had Manic Monday and Wacky Wednesday and all sorts of uh, innovations to get audiences to go back to the cinema. And Crazy Tuesday, I, have, I uh, went many Crazy Tuesdays to see all sorts of films. So thank you very much for that, Movie House Dublin Road. Now, N is for a cinema that I remember called The New Vic, situated next to the Grand Opera House. Um, never the most beautiful building, you know, in fact, quite the opposite. Um, the ugly sister of the Grand Opera House. Um, now, the thing about the new Vic was it looked ugly from the outside, but inside it was beautiful. Um, and it had a grand staircase and, you know, it had a balcony. And I remember going to see Indiana Jones in this cinema. And I remember going to see James Bond. Um, the spy who loved me in this cinema. I mean, and, and this is what I remembered. But wait a minute, haven't we seen the new Vic somewhere before? That's right, the new Vic was actually the Hippodrome. They had just covered up that beautiful Edwardian ornate exterior with that awful 60s cladding. So actually, I I'd never thought that I'd been to the Hippodrome, but I had. I actually have been to the Hippodrome. Um, the New Vic, of course, sadly closed in 1993 and cinema moved then round to the Dublin Road. O, well, with each letter O, this is for organists. Now, I want to pay tribute to all the musicians who played in cinemas uh, because cinemas were never silent. Let's be clear about that. We talk about the silent movie era. It was always accompanied by music, either by uh, pianists, organists, or full orchestras in some of Belfast cinemas. The talkies, of course, changed all of that, and many musicians uh, went out of work. This is Leslie Simpson sitting at the huge Berlitzer organ in the classic cinema. And the most famous organ in Belfast was this one, the Mighty Compton, uh, here played by musician Stanley Wiley uh, in the Ritz Cinema. This is taken in 1952, this photograph. Now, if you have ever been to the cinema with live musical accompaniment, it is absolutely marvelous. It's always some, it's a real treat and something that I look forward to, and I hope that we can return to it. Now, another unsung hero of the cinema is the letter P for projectionist. Now, this is what we're not to see, really, uh, which is the projection booth, because somehow that destroys the magic. It's all smoke and mirrors in cinemas. You know, you go through a series of doors and the lights dim and dim and dim and curtains open, and that ant anticipation is all created by the projectionist. And this is a key sensation in our enjoyment of cinema. Here is the projection booth in the Ritz, uh, which was apparently one of the largest projection booths in Ireland. Look, you can, you can drive a car in there. Now, to be fair, I think they've tidied up the day that that photograph was taken. Uh, it just looks a little bit too sparse in there, in my judgment of projection booths. 
Now, we have reached the letter Q, which of course has to be for Queen's Film Theatre, the home of independent cinema in Northern Ireland. Opened in 1968, the QFT um, was a lifeline to many people during the Troubles uh, and showed films from all around the world just when we needed them most. And uh, survives to this day, I'm glad to say, and just two weeks ago reopened after being closed for several months. Um, now, one of the reasons that QFT survived was because if you remember, the original entrance was up the Muse, it's kind of up a dark alleyway. And one of the reasons it survived where others were firebombed is because no one could find it. Uh, so th that was very useful for the QFT and its survival. Of course, it has a new modern entrance now and a bar and cafe. And I would recommend going back to the QFT. Or we've got to return to the wonder cinema of Belfast in the city centre, the Ritz. Here it is. Uh, what a magnificent building it was. Opened by Gracie Fields in November 1936. It was the wonder cinema of Ireland. 2,200 seats in this cinema. Um, now, if you look at the outside there, you queued up under um, a neon lit canopy. I mean, none of this queuing in the rain. Um, and then you stepped up these marble steps um, off the pavement into a kind of dream world through double glass doors into a wood panel foyer, a grand staircase illuminated by a glorious chandelier. And the restaurant, I mean, we've talked about restaurants, but hey, the restaurant in the Ritz, here it is. This was fine dining. Uh, you could, and it also had a dance floor. So you could dance, dine, and then a movie. And again, this restaurant opened at 10 a.m. and uh, was open until 11 p.m. at night. And that's how the film program worked. It was a continuous program at that time. Um, now, during the interval, let's go inside the Ritz. Here we are during the interval. There's the mighty Compton organ. And wait, I hear Stanley Wiley just about to play. Now, musical entertainment doesn't get much better than that. Or does it? Because look, it's the Fab Four. In the Ritz, which in 1963 became the ABC Ritz. And here they are, the Beatles played there. And uh, there's John Lennon with his cine camera. And remarkably, look, George Harrison has an iPad. So they were really ahead of their time, the Beatles. Um, but what happened to the Ritz? Well. Sadly, the Ritz was firebombed in 1977 and the ornate exterior of the building was destroyed. It did reopen a few years later as the Canon uh, in a four screen cinema, which is what I remember it as. And um, what is it today? Jury's Hotel is on the site and there's something wrong with the fact that the entrance is not where the entrance of the Ritz used to be, because it should just be right there on the corner. And every time I go there, I, I, I want to go in there where the Ritz used to be. Okay, we're coming to the end, the letter S. It has to be for the Strand Cinema, because here we are in East Belfast. Of course, one of the great cinemas designed by John McBride, Neil, in the shadow off the shipyard. And look at the Strand. It, it resembles an ocean liner. Destination Hollywood. Um, there is something nautical about the design of it. Um, let's go inside. Look at that beautiful streamlined Art Deco ticket office. There we have Shirley Temple's latest film about to play. And if we go inside the cinema itself again, balcony and stalls. You know, again, you're talking more than a thousand seats. I mean, just the sound of the laughter in these cinemas. 
um, is something to behold. Now, what happened to the strap? Well, wait, the nautical theme. This is looking towards uh, the screen and look at the portholes that John McBride Neal has designed along there. Again, for that sense that you're on an ocean liner. Wonderful. Now, what happened to the strand? Well, it was firebombed. It was sold. It was potentially gonna be demolished. It could have been a supermarket. It, many things could have happened to the strand. Uh, but I'm delighted to say it survived. Hooray. Today it is, of course, an art center and cinema, and it's still the jewel of East Belfast. It's the only one of the great picture palaces still screening films, and it's so beautiful to see it, and such a great tribute. The letter T has to be for TV, and one of the turning points for Belfast cinemas was the launch of UTV uh, in October 1959. It was launched by Sir Laurence Olivier, and you can see him on the screen here. And at that stage, cinema audiences immediately dropped by 20%. UTV targeted the audiences, the working class audiences, who were going to the picture houses. Um, and that was a great impact. And that's why many of the theaters and cinemas closed in the early 1960s. Now, T, I also just want to mention the Troxy. It's one of the other great Belfast cinemas on the Shore Road. Again, one of the Art Deco picture palaces built in 1936. I love the design that it had shops at the front, um, you know, very much like the tonic and banger, that kind of design. And one of the things that it was famous for was the abolition of the outdoor queue. Now, this is such a great idea in Belfast. Um, there was a long interior corridor here where people queued up inside before they paid and went to the stalls. Clever idea. Stay out of the rain and the cold. Sadly, we don't do that enough in our architectural design. Um, it did become the Grove Theatre eventually in 1965 um, and so sadly closed in 1977 before the inevitable firebomb um, would gut the interior of the theatre. Today on the site is Lidl. Well, so people are still visiting. Now, U is for Universal. You'll know those famous Universal horror films of the 1930s, Dracula, Frankenstein, The Wolfman, etc. Well, um, Belfast City Council had a police committee who decided that Frankenstein was a little too blasphemous for the citizens of Belfast and banned the film. Yes, we were the only city in the UK to ban Frankenstein. It had played at the classic cinema and had been a monster success. And the city council, fearing its effect, its ill effect on the citizens, banned the film. Now, many other great films would be banned by the city of Belfast, so it's nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, they included uh, Last Tango in Paris and The Life of Brian. Uh, and one of the other things that Belfast City Council were concerned about was the Americanization of Belfast citizens, that somehow cinema would influence us to such an extent that we would become Americanized, that we would start talking in a kind of GMAC kind of a way, a kind of James Galway kind of transatlantic kind of thing. And many of us actually do talk like that, and I'm guilty of that myself. Um, now, V is for visitors. There have been many famous film visitors come to Belfast over the years, uh, but this has to be my favorite visit by the great Archibald Leach, Cary Grant in 1959. Cary came to the Ritz Cinema for a screening of his latest film, Indiscreet. He was presented with a shillelagh, which is, you know, an important thing to do. But if any of you out there have ever hosted a Q&A in Belfast in cinemas, which I've done, then this will become a very familiar story. After the film, Cary Grant roamed the stage with a microphone inviting questions uh, to find out what the public wanted to know. 
At first, the questions were slow in coming. Slow in coming. It's the Ritz Cinema. There's 2,000 seats and no one has a question for Cary Grant. So Cary Grant had to start by asking himself questions. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, uh, great to know that Cary Grant did come and had a great time when he was in Belfast. Now, Belfast cinemas did not close during the war. This is the letter W for World War II. Um, remarkably, Belfast cinemas stayed open during uh, the Second World War. And this was important, obviously, for the morale of the citizens, but also for the newsreels and uh, to keep up to date with what was happening in the war. Other visitors that came to Belfast at this time would also influence cinemas and this was wait for it the americans were becoming americanized because 300,000 american soldiers came through northern ireland uh, from january 1942 and what did they do well there was never cinema on a sunday in belfast until the americans came and they said nothing to do on a sunday open those goddamn cinemas and they opened them and uh, they wouldn't open again until 1978. So that was quite extraordinary by the American soldiers. Now, sadly, the war did come to Belfast in the shape of the Belfast Blitz in 1941. And we lost several picture houses, including the Midland, the Queen's Picture House on York Street. And this is the Lyric on High Street that were destroyed never to return. X has to be for X rated. The British Board of Film Censors produced a list of 43 subjects that give grounds for an X certificate. Now, frankly, uh, most of these are the reasons why I go to watch any film. Um, so X rated, like to me, um, was a great promotional tool. Uh, but some of them, you know, are men and women in bed together, drug habit, the white slave traffic, in decorous dancing, wow. Now, why is for York Street, this was Belfast's original cinema strip. So here we have the great mills on York Street. And it was here that the very first custom built cinemas. So we, we saw that cinema began in theaters and then they started to build custom built cinemas in the 1920s. And these were cinemas like the Electric Picture Palace, the New York Picture Palace, that were exclusively showing films. Um, and I'm glad to say that York Street still boasts cinema today in the shape of Movie House, City Side. So even a century later, um, we're still watching films in that location in, ironically, one of the old mills. Okay, now we have reached. We have reached the letter Z. We have reached the end. Thank you for not sleeping in the cinema. It's been a delight to chat to you all. And uh, we have now come to the end. So we are now going to show you some of the artifacts that are available here in Prony. Okay, so what, what is wonderful to see that there is in Prony here is actual architectural designs for some of the cinemas in Belfast. This is for the Tivoli Cinema, if anybody remembers the Tivoli in Finnegy. This is one of the later cinemas to be built in 1955. But I'm very excited to see here the classic cinema. Do you remember the classic cinema that we talked about in Castle Lane? built in 1923 that became British Home Source. And there's the original design of where the cinema was to go. And if we move around here now, here's that very colorful program for the classic cinema. How gorgeous is that? Now, can we just open up that program? Is that mm -hmm. possible? Let's just open up and see inside. Look, look at that beautiful program. So there's great uh, advertisement designs here. There's the Rotunda restaurant and Tar Cafe. I just like to see what's on the menu, which is great. 
Now in corn market, we, we, we looked at some of the cinemas that were around the classic, it was also the Imperial. Here's the program for the Imperial. And again, you'll see on the front cover here, the Imperial Cafe three course luncheon. You know, we went to cinema with our stomachs. That's what it sounds like. Um, now here's some beautiful pictures here um, of outside Belfast cinemas. There's the concierge who, who, who's keeping the crowds in order there. Can you see that? You know, this looks like a kid's club. You know, when we talked about kid's clubs, this is probably a Saturday morning. Kids go into the cinema. So this is some of the great artifacts that, that is here in Pune.